Hello and welcome along to this session, the SAGE CRM Summit, hosted by Cumulus. I'm David Beard, the CRM principal with SAGE CRM. Looking forward to your company for the next half an hour as we bring you a session that's really about helping people understand uh, the value of CRM. And that could be in your own partner organization, if you're a reseller of SAGE CRM, or indeed if you are a customer and you're looking to bring along the rest of the stakeholders inside your company. We're calling it Pitching the CRM Story to the Non-Believers. So let's make a start. Let's first of all take a look at this idea of, well, you know, what is customer relationship management all about? So generally, I like to describe this, and I borrowed a statement from an analyst firm here that I've been using for a number of years now, this idea that it's a business strategy. Sure, there's software involved. Sure, there's delivery and, and people to be trained and things like that. But it's a strategy, and it should be thought of a strategy inside any business, whatever they do, designed to optimize the way they are going to market, how profitable they are, how to manage revenue and how to manage, importantly, particularly these days, more than any, any other, this ability to manage customer satisfaction. And for me, over the years of working with partners, with customers and, and delivering implementations and sales training, this idea comes back again and again. If you're looking to bring the non-believers along with you, it's great to speak in terms of measurable value. The idea that this software and the delivery of it can be brought to help any business. And if you focus on that lens of increasing revenue, avoiding costs or improving service, it's a really good way to focus everybody in a business, wherever you are, whatever you do, around the value of what CRM as a strategy, firstly, and software, secondly, can bring to a business. It's a great way of thinking about CRM inside anything. So typical business functions, whatever a business does, they're usually looking to drive revenue, either increase it or maintain it in some way, avoid the cost in doing that story and driving some hopefully improvement or increases in service customer service, customer follow-up, whatever those measures are. And so it's useful to think of that, those three things, those lenses, if you will, as I mentioned earlier, inside any business. And as you sit down and talk with stakeholders in a business to ask questions about how well they go to market and how well do they, in particular, find new business, sell to those companies they find, and then look after them at the end of it all. So keeping in mind all the time the measurement pieces at the top, what are the increases in revenue we can do, How? what are the cost avoidance we can do, and equally this idea of improving service, and then thinking about it in terms of the businesses you're talking to, how well they do these things. It's all about the focus points of the business. Now, sometimes, depending on how you approach the CRM story, it can be really top level. It could be you're speaking to the owner operator of business and you want to have a good strategic conversation about what is it they do now and where do they want to be in two years time and what's their market approach and things like that. And CRM could help them enable that story. But I think it's equally important to remember that you may indeed, if, particularly if you're a reseller, but equally if you're a customer and looking to bring along other non-believers in your company, it's also important to think about the people you're talking to and what their exact focus is. I know that sounds kind of obvious. It's almost like a sales 101 question. Who am I talking to and what are they interested in? But it's important to remember that CRM type conversations, the product and where it could be used, should be thought of at three levels because you're not entirely sure who you're talking to or what their focus is. So at the very bottom, if you go to the analytical, it could be that you're dealing with a particular department in your business, if you're a customer, that's all about, say, I don't know, doing digital marketing. And actually what they're looking to do is do much cleverer marketing based on more relevant data to inform the way they target their emails rather than just blanket emailing everyone in the database. So that's a very analytical need. And so the idea, of course, at that level would be to have a very analytical conversation about the feature set inside Sage CRM and how it would help them do that task. Whereas going back up to strategic or even operational level, 
you could be having a very different conversation more generally about the value of the CRM product set overall in helping them go to market, in launching a new product, in going into a new region. Okay. So it's important to think about the customer focus, obviously, before you start even thinking about or mentioning any particular feature sets in the product. And once you've had those sort of level conversations to figure out who you're talking to and what's their focus, then and only then is it worth uncovering or opening the box of features and talking about the way Sage CRM does sales management, the way it does customer service management, or indeed with the bubbles around the edges there, is it integrated to something else? Do they need any extra add-ons and so on and so forth? The business value you present on the product, as it says on the screen there, can be all sorts of things. You could touch on 33 features in the product, but, 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 it's a waste of your time, if you're a reseller or a customer, if you're presenting the wrong things to the wrong person or whether the conversation is misaligned. So it's no good showing the deep down detail of a marketing tool within the product to somebody who's the owner operator is interested in the strategic future of their company and vice versa. So presenting the value story, increasing revenue, avoiding cost, improving service should be part of every conversation you have through the lens of the customer you're talking to or the stakeholder you're talking to. So focus on the relevant features and always think about the what does it mean to me part of that conversation. So every thought almost before you send it out your mouth, this is the idea about this particular thing I'm saying to you is important because or means to you, or this particular feature I'm showing to you right now means that I can help you increase revenue in your direct marketing because, and that means to you a saving of X hundred dollars, five days a month, whatever the measurable value is, okay? So I want you really, if you've not thought about it in, this terms, in these terms before, this idea that every interaction, always, 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 if, whenever possible, consider it in terms of value. How can you help a customer increase revenue, avoid cost, or improve service? So I sort of marry those up into what I call the mnemonic, there's IRACIS, right? So I-R-A-C-I-S, IRACIS, if you prefer. So let me just run you through that sort of thinking so the operational, uh, sorry, the customer lens and the measurable value conversations. Let me blend those together with some example storytelling. And I'll do it through the features of marketing, sales, and service in the product. So a lot of our marketing literature, talk, literature talks about this idea of, oh, Sage CRM helps marketing executives increase lead flow, blah, blah, blah. What does that actually mean? Okay, well, let's look at a few of the features and do that, shall we? So inside the tool, there is a campaign management feature or module where you design campaigns and campaigns are made up of various stages where you're emailing one group of people, phoning another group of people, etc. And you can track costs and revenues against that and then attach the flags of each of the campaigns to individual sales or service type activity. So you can start to measure the return on investment. Now, analytically, great features in the product means you can use the workflow to drive through the activity time-based, change in database, and things like that. So you have consistency in delivery. You can compare and contrast between campaigns. So if you're a marketeer, that's a very analytical sort of conversation to have. It's an important one to have with that person. Hey, Mr. Marketeer or head of direct mail or head of campaigning, here's a way to use these tools to manage how you take that campaign X and campaign Y to market, compare and contrast, et cetera. If I roll up to the strategic level, maybe you're talking to the head of marketing for a business across the globe. It's this idea that you can bring together using the tool set that I focused on with the analytical piece to say, I can show you right across your company for all the people doing marketing, how the whole performance is going across different campaigns, across different sectors and so on, and then start to get that return on investment measure, start to look at how the particular campaigns are working in different sales sectors, uh, different regions, those sorts of things. So you can see how on the left, I've talked about some feature sets in the product, and on the right, I'm looking at it through the lens of a different sort of operational person, but always speaking in terms of measurable value. Let's do another one. 
again inside marketing. This idea that in the product we have dashboards everywhere. Dashboards can be used to do head up displays of important data so that people can quickly check in on things that are going on. In our example here, it will be campaigns. If you're in an analytical mode, it could be a great way for an operational, a marketeer, to put data about campaign performance on the desktop of someone who's on the phones manning inbound replies to campaigns. Okay, it could be a great simple way of doing that. Up the top, this idea that dashboards will roll up to the head of the company, head of department, head of region to show all the marketing campaigns that are going on and all the sorts of responses they're getting and, and maybe the measurable sales dollars coming back in the door or the measurable contracts being renewed, something like that. Let me have one more in marketing and I'll sort of speed up as I go along here just so the point is made. I think you're getting it. This idea of blended contacts, I call it blended. This idea of plugging your CRM system into other systems like websites and emails. At an analytical level, if you're delivering a campaign, you can implement some call to action that includes customers coming back to a website or customers replying to a certain email address that the CRM system can itself manage, monitor, track, flow through the business, etc. Up the very top, the strategic story then becomes not only can you do campaigning on just a phone call, but you could do campaigning on inbound leads to a website. You could do campaigning measure on inbound return on emails. So this idea had a strategic overlay that says, depending on the type of campaign I'm running or the region or the product or something like that, I can have different blended points or different contact areas and I can compare and contrast how they are working. If I move into the sales category and using our sort of uh, top line messaging, that's the sort of thing you expect to see on a website, how Sage CRM can help you grow revenue. How do you take those conversations further down? Right, well, let's look at a couple of features within the product that can be applied to people in those sales roles. And again, I'll do it in an analytical to strategic flow, if that makes sense. So within the product, there are templates and processes you can automate. What does that mean at an analytical level? Someone could design a sales workflow for a particular product, then then roll it across different teams, regional teams, operational teams, so that the accuracy and the methodology is the same and that people capture the details you expect them to capture. So you get a very analytically rich set of data back rather than hoping just each team remembers to fill in all the details. And if I roll up to the strategic level there, head of department, head of company, the message is slightly different, just as valuable, I think, but slightly different in that you are saying, here's a way I can use a particular feature to make sure that people are as productive as possible when they're following up leads, following up sales quotes, perhaps that they're all automatically capturing the forecast value of a sale just as part of the normal workflow rather than relying on each team to manually fill in the numbers. Much better productivity helps them avoid cost in that example, perhaps also increase revenue. Something we talk a lot about is this idea of improving the 360 degree view, whatever team they're in. I'm talking out in terms of sales here. From an analytical context, it could be that you're just giving the ability of a sales lead to put on the desktop in front of everybody um, the latest sales overnight or our top three performing salespeople. So you're getting that rich data, you can drop straight into a report. Whereas at the top of the business, when you're talking to the owner operator, so strategic lens, it could be that you're giving a much better way of doing business planning. What do I mean by that? This idea that you, you're you aiming into a new market, you're hoping to get an X percent growth in a particular customer segment, and you're rolling all that data up through all your different divisions, your different product lines, your different sales teams to show how that strategy is working. Is my retention good here? Is the customer experience story strong here? And so on. Here's another one. Dashboarding, again, figures strongly as it does right the way through the product. But this idea at an analytical level at the bottom, you're using a common set of tools to roll data into people who need it immediately and quickly based on the underpinning CRM data. Whereas at the very top, dashboards right across the business can ensure that staff at the higher levels know exactly how different teams are performing, maybe compared to each other, maybe compared to different product lines, maybe compared to different times of the year those sorts of things. So KPIs in one place gives people at the top of a company a much better way of spotting revenue trends, increasing revenue, turning off things that are not performing, 
and maybe making it much better in terms of avoiding cost as well because you're not having to lasso together hundreds of spreadsheets to get that view that you're hoping will give you the strategic overlay of the performance. And finally, in service, with our loan E at the bottom there, this idea of having a self-service portal, enabling customers to come to a website, which is linked to the Sage CRM underpinning information that shows the customer details, the service cases they've raised, the products they own, anything like that, at an analytical concept at the bottom there, at a level, you've got the ability to make data managed and available to customers simply and easily without having to worry about resending it out or worrying about teams sending out the wrong information to a customer. Whereas the strategic level, the conversation becomes, how can I strip the cost out of enabling support? Or how can I improve the service for customers of being able to look up their own records or adjust their own data or log service cases? So you can see how that stands up as well. And the same thing works for here we are again with KPI. So in services terms, at an analytical level, getting all the data onto a head-up display for an individual team, at a strategic level, being much more productive, improving the service delivery for that team. So you can see how I hope anyway, this idea that you can take a feature set and then thinking about the people you're talking to, have a measurable value conversation that resonates with, with where their head's at. What sort of people are they? What sort of things are they looking for? And how did you frame the conversation around that feature set in the right way to express measurable value to each of those people, whatever level they are in the business? The risk of repeating myself, I will. <laughs> Every feature you mentioned should always connect to a business's function and should always have an intention or an outcome at, at the end of it all, right? Begin with this outcome in mind or an end in mind that you're helping them, your internal stakeholders, or if you're a reseller, when you're talking to your customers, helping them understand how they can increase revenue, reduce costs, or improve service in their business. Because at the end of it all, that's what software for most companies is all about. Being efficient, making money, avoiding costs, doing better things with the team of people they've got to hand. So I'd encourage you in whatever role you are, internal, with your own colleagues or as a reseller talking to customers, have a structure for these conversations, right? Develop some intent and trust with them. Have a structured dialogue, a bit like I was just talking about earlier. Who are you in the business? What things are causing you issues? What features can I talk to you about? And then make sure on the back of those, you come up with some tangible actions. We agreed that having dashboards, here's an example, we agreed that having a dashboard in the service teams area would be good because it brings data to 10 people who right now spend three hours a day doing spreadsheets and we figure that's worth saving money on and that would save the company X amount of dollars, right? Simple example like that. Because the idea is you want to gain some agreement to these actions and then circle around and have those conversations again and again for either different audiences or different feature sets or different functions in the business, probably a combination of all three. If you communicate with a specific purpose and you know about the company you work for, or if you're a reseller, you know about the industry you're talking to, have this meaningful conversation and think and ask thoughtful questions on the back of that. How do you do marketing to your customer base? How do you sell to a new region? sell a new product to a new customer and then you know really drill on these business process questions to understand the goals and the challenges and the goals and the challenges will help to form the beginnings of that structured how am i going to increase revenue for you with this product or avoid cost or improve service quantify the benefits is where we're going with this so to blow out those green squares a bit more and i'll give you just a couple of quick run throughs here Broad organizational goals, who are we, why are we in business, objective strategies, whatever, and then break down into goals and resources by product line, by team, by region, whatever that is, and then start firming these up into goals per team with open questions, and then start drilling down into specific things to make sure you then form some impact questions or impact answers. So using my previous example of direct mail or, or digital marketing, it could be, I know currently we have five people who spend three hours each a week lassoing spreadsheets together 
if I could move them to CRM with an inbuilt campaign tool where the data is captured automatically, how much is that going to save the company in terms of time and human capital? And then do that again and again and again for every business team in the business. We'll talk a little more about how deployment of CRM matters in some of the other sessions. Danny particularly will be talking about 357. I will talk about managing a successful project. And a lot of these ideas will circle through those sessions as well, by the way. This idea about you need to frame the big picture, broad organizational situation, as it says at the top, but you do need to drop into detail across different departments to then help figure out, well, where do we start with the CRM project? Are there five things we must do next month? Because you'll end up with a list, I promise you, 50 things a customer could probably want. You have to prioritize, right? So the idea of having impact questions at the bottom there is it will start firming up hard numbers so it's much easier to prioritize which of the five things you do out of the 50 first. Okay. So, simple examples. I, well, I think they're simple examples. I've kind of touched on a few already. These open questions, talking to a department, tell me about your KPIs for your particular department. Is it sales information? How do you go to market? How do you manage these particular processes? And then you start dropping into this specific or specificity of questions. What exactly do you mean by that data source? Where exactly is that issue of accuracy? What happens when the process doesn't work? And so on. Get the impact information out and establish the value. If you follow that sort of three box approach, tell me about how you do this. Tell me about what works and what doesn't work. Tell me how that impacts you. You can then start to build a chunk of information about a particular problem where CRM could help out. Okay. So it could be around how they do customer management. This is the same sort of thing. Tell me about how you roll up data from salespeople. What happens when the forecasts are good or bad? What does that matter? How would it improve it? And then what does it actually cost you when you do it the old way? And what could it be looking like when we do it the new way? And so Now, talking like this sometimes for people, particularly if you're in a customer and you need to think larger than your own department or your own role, it takes practice. You know, talking about business returns probably might not be the natural thing you're used to doing, but it is worth doing because there are lots of measures and there are lots of things that go on inside companies that people talk about. They go, oh, lead metrics or return on investment or sales by region or open rates. Or, or, or. And it's important to think what these all mean and why they matter to a business. But you need to make it part of your conversation. Even if you're inside an organization, I think this matters just as much as it does to resellers who think that they are trying to get inside a customer's head. If you're inside a customer, it's just as valuable. So think about what it looks like. Think about yourself using CRM, but also put yourself in the shoes of your other employees, your colleagues, and think about the way they could measure, improve, deliver better returns, increase revenue, avoid cost, improve service in their particular role. A lot of the times I hear people say to me, ah, yeah, but I can't get that team to think about CRM because they've got their own spreadsheets or they've got their own way of doing things and oh, they don't believe in CRM. And a set of data I found some years ago, which I use again and again, it's still valuable because even if the data itself has changed, I think the direction of travel is still consistent. We asked a typical small or medium business customer of Sage, how do you manage customer data? And back then, and this is still valid now, look at the green and the blue, right? So people say, oh, I use spreadsheets or nothing at all. They're just using Outlook files, shared directories or shared um, folders on a, a server, things like that, just dump stuff in. And we know in 2020, that it's just not really a sustainable way to run a business. And in fact, a survey done by Aberdeen Group looked at the way customers in that sector manage customer data and what benefits it brought them. And what they looked at is they looked at 100 so companies and they looked at sales effectiveness. That's what they called it. And specifically, they called it sales effectiveness by looking at how a company organizes customer centric data, how they provide that data to people who need it, and how they use data, connected data to do a better management of accounts. And here's what they found, right? So they grouped all these 100 companies into what they call the best in class. 
And what they found, the people who join up CRM type systems with back office systems, accounting, shipping, bar, they tend to find, or they found, I should say, that customers who do join up all their systems and make data available to anyone who needs it in the company will retain customers 94% of the time. And I think the really bigger and scarier number there is the 19%. So these are the people at the bottom who don't have joined up systems. They are only doing customer retention of 20% a year. 20% a year means every five years they are replacing their entire customer base. Now, maybe you know how much it costs to get a customer, maybe you don't. Generally, it's an expensive business to get a new customer on board. It's a lot cheaper to keep them. So even if you just do some mathematics there with uh, your own teams internally, or if you're a reseller with customers you're talking to, and say to them, ask people how much it takes to bring a customer on board, and then, and then sort of multiply that out by a number of customers per year, and see what that actually costs the business. Some of the other measures that Aberdeen came across as well include things like when you've got joined up information, where anyone who picks up a phone can have a coherent conversation with a customer, then their increase in client net value is 13% versus 2% where people don't have joined up information. And for the people who say, ah, my sales team will never use CRM, I say to them, data from Aberdeen suggests they'll do 12% over their targets if you give them joined up data systems versus they'll be under target if they're having to scrabble around finding out the last time anyone talked to their customers about something. So just three simple examples. There were a lot more in that study, by the way, which is done a few years ago now. But the idea is the blue boxes are the one you're looking at there. The best in class people are the ones where they join up back office and front office, accounts and CRM, and give the data to the frontline personnel who need it. They can have a much better coherent conversation with customers and they manage the service, sales, and um, marketing processes a lot better because of that joining up of systems. So the key message here is to get the non-believers to believe it. And it's up to us, you as a stakeholder, you as a reseller, us as the vendor, to articulate the value of CRM to them, for them to understand why CRM matters. So that's the end of this show. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I hope that's been useful, and I hope to see you on some of the other sessions as well.